I don't have a sweet tooth. I have sweet teeth, every one of them. A meal is like a story. It needs a great ending to be memorable. So today, I have some sweet conclusion for you. The first thing I want to show you is something I call it kiwi fruit fritters. I have mentioned earlier, kiwi fruit was originally grown in western part of China. They actually called the Sichuan wild gooseberry. They also call monkey fruit. They monkey them around with the fruit, and it's <laughs> delicious. And you can use it and eat it as a fruit by itself, or show you. This is beautiful. Look at this. Can you see this? Wonderful. Grown in California. California kiwi fruit. All you have to do is you don't even have to peel the darn thing. You just. It's absolutely delicious. This particular dish I want to show you is very easy to do. It's nice and it's easy. You can do it in the last minute, right before you serve dinner. All I have is a kiwi fruit. Okay? You can cut it up into slices like this. Okay? If you want, you can always peel it, but you don't have to in this particular case. And give some extra texture. Slice it. One, two, three, four. All together. Okay? Set it aside. Put it right over here, okay? And then you're gonna make a batter to make the fritter. Here, I have flour. I have three quarter cup of flour, and I have some sugar. This is approximately one tablespoon of sugar, okay? And also some five spice powder, and also baking powder. I have about one teaspoon of baking powder, and a tiny bit of five spice powder. Make it really nice. And also, mix them all up with water. Make it into a batter. You should make this better ahead of time, okay? You should not do it in the last minute. This way, you can put it in the fridge and let it form a nice, good, look at this. Make a nice better. Actually, you need a little bit more water, okay? We're gonna get a tiny, tiny bit more water. So glad that I'm so close to the water. This way, at home when I was a little kid in China, when I need water, I have to go all the way down to the street and pick it up in a little well. And by the time I come back, all my fritters is gone. <laughs> and then we put some oil to give that nice glaze to my batter, OK? And then, if you want to make it more interesting, put some black sesame seed. Sprinkle a tiny bit of black sesame seed, OK? So the bread is slightly brown. When it's ready, you set it aside and cover up and put it in the fridge, OK? for a couple hours. In the meantime, I pick up one I have in the fridge for about two hours. Now, when you're ready, let me show you how fast you can do this, okay? Get ready, once again, make sure your oil is hot, okay? Can you see that the oil is getting there because you see bubble coming out, but not smoking. If it smokes, the oil is too hot, okay? You're gonna have charcoal burn, Kiwi fruit fritter. <laughs> no good. Now, when this is done, this is how you do it, okay? Coat this with flour or cornstarch. Otherwise, it would not stay with the... Uh... Look at this, look at this. I'm so excited, I am speechless. <laughs> I do that sometimes because when I get excited, I just don't know what to say. <laughs> you know, this will stay with the batter a lot better. Otherwise, the batter will come out loose. So this is how you do it. Look. One. Everybody look. Dip it in. Don't slam dunk the darn thing. <laughs> Drop it in very, very carefully because otherwise you might get into trouble. Okay? A lot of people will say, how come when you go to Chinese restaurants, how come in a Chinese meal there's not much dessert? The number of reasons why they don't have dessert, because there's no oven in China. So a lot of dessert you need the oven to do, you cannot do it. Secondly, there's no refrigerator. So a lot of things that you have to chew, you cannot do it. Besides, sugar is very precious. And one of the main reasons is they never have enough dentists. <laughs> 
And then look at this, until golden brown, and it's very, very easy to do. You do not want to cook it too long. When it's nice and golden brown, let me clean up. Okay, let me make sure this is done. Get a strainer, nice and golden brown. Look at how beautiful this is. Turn them around, turn them around. When it's done, you know, this can be very, very good. Get ready to serve. This is tea leaf. Look at this. When this is done, take it out. It doesn't take too long to cook at all. And this is wonderful. And this is nice and golden brown. You see the black sesame seeds still stay there. Set it aside, put it here, and let it drain a little bit. Okay? And then you be brave. I risk my life to entertain you. And I hope you at home appreciate that. <laughs> and then if you want, sprinkle a tiny bit of powdered sugar, okay? Look at this, this is a beautiful, just like a little snow. Here you have a sensational kiwi fruit fritter, right here. <clears throat> now the next thing I wanna show you is a kiwi fruit. And I want to show you another very, very exciting, very interesting dish, which I will do in second. I'm going to show you how to do a kiwi fruit almond shortcake. Okay, here I have an almond shortcake. Look at this. This is beautiful almond shortcake. You make it yourself with a tiny bit of almond paste, walnut butter, and of course flour baking powder. But if you don't have time, you buy it. This looks homemade. I must have bought it, or I must have made it. <laughs> We're gonna make a sauce. Now, the shortcake you can make ahead of time. Just keep it warm, warm it up anytime. And then, ready, get up, get some of these kiwi fruit, and you slice it into pieces like this, okay? Set it aside. We're gonna put this into our sauce. In this sauce, we're gonna make a kiwi sauce with pineapple juice. Look at this. We'll melt some rock sugar. This is rock sugar, okay? Make sure you don't drop it on your toe. It hurts, look at this. Very dangerous. I crush this and I put it, I melt it, and I thicken it up with cornstarch or tapioca starch. Mix this up Why I'm tossing. And then you get a nice, really bright glaze. Look at this, very, very easy to do. Melt this, stir this, stir this. This is good exercise. <laughs> do this all the time. And then when it's done and ready, all you have to do is put the kiwi fruit right in here. And then you can garnish this with a tiny bit of, oh, whipped cream. Put a tiny bit right over here. Look at this. And then put a couple of slice of these berry, and this is nice and done. When it's done, shut it off. Make sure if this is a little bit too thick, always make sure the right consistency. Otherwise, you don't want a glue, you want a glaze. When it's done, look at how beautiful this is. We'll put it right over here. Get a couple of pieces of these kiwi out. Okay, get a couple of these kiwi out. And then, you put this right over here. And look at, how beautiful. Kiwi almond shortcake. Here is a sweet place we all love to visit. As a kid, I hung around the kitchen a lot. But like all kids, I love hanging around the candy store even more. Even now, I still love the candy store in Chinatown. Of course, it is more fun going with a friend. Although these treats are sweet, Many of them are made from your favorite natural ingredients, like candy ginger, full of flavor and heat, and spongy square candy covered with shredded coconut that comes in a rainbow of colors. And then we have crystallized pineapple rings. And don't forget this winter melon. And lotus root, which is used as a main ingredient in many Chinese dishes. It also comes in a sweet version. 
And then, who can resist this crunchy peanut brittle? Ah, here's my favorite, candy coconut. The Chinese have traditionally eaten coconut. We call ye ji in Chinese to strengthen relationship between parents and children, the old and the young. I don't know whether it is true or not, but I can think of a sweeter way to make new friends. Can you? My little friend is still back there at the store. I think she lives there now. I love the candy store because every time I go to Chinatown or Chinese store, I always walk around and pick up a few things because those, a lot of them are fresh fruits. It's natural stuff. Now, I just try my short king and I love it. When I get depressed, I always bake. But every time I bake, it always burn. But at least get all my depression out. So I love it. <laughs> Besides, life is too short. So big more short cake. Baking short cake doesn't have to be a tall order. <laughs> now, we are going to light up something very exciting. We're going to light up a from bay dessert, tropical fruit. Like I said, nothing lights up a dinner like a from bay dessert. So this is a very unique one because I use a lot of tropical fruits. Here I have mango, okay? And I cut the mango like this, okay? And I have papaya, I have banana. And I cut this like this, one, two, three. And then I cut one, two, Three. Normally, you should do it with a little knife. So when you put it, it comes out like this. Very easy to come out. So all you have to do is just take it out. One, two, three, four. Just scoop it out. Just push it down. Push it down. And then you have all kinds of fruits right here. And then you cut up some papaya. Okay. Cut it up in half, cut into pieces or wedges like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Set it aside, put it right here. One, two, three. Set it aside right here. And then have a nice banana. Cut it up. Also cut it up in half, okay? Cut it up in half, set this aside, and then you go one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Set all this wonderful fruit. Fruit is good for you. Now, when this is all nice and ready, you are going to get ready to flambe. Here, I turn on the heat, okay, to medium, okay. Now, I put a tiny bit of butter right here. This is about two or three tablespoons of butter, okay. You can use margarine, okay. And also, use a tiny bit of minced ginger. I want to make sure you are totally awake. Done. Some ginger, and then put a tiny bit of sugar and a tiny bit of five spice powder to from bay our fruit. This is very easy to do. Make sure you move them around, okay? Otherwise, it will burn. Don't use very high heat. Look at this. And then when it's done, you scoop out and put the fruit. Hold on to the fruit, and you put the fruit right in here. Look at this. This is going to be very, very colorful, very easy to do, okay? Look at this. And then when you are ready, you from bake. This is a great dish to do when the electricity is out. <laughs> Look at this. But don't do it. Don't do it too close. You're making from bake fruit. You're not from being your eyebrow. <laughs> Wow, look at this. Scoop the sauce. So this way, very exciting experience. <laughs> and then when this is done, all you have to do, look at how easy this is. All you have to do is scoop this beautiful farm bay fruit right into this sh short cake. Look at this. Can you believe how marvelous it looks, huh? And then when it's done, all you have to do is chop up some Candy ginger, make it more exciting. Candy ginger, sprinkle, put it right on top, and you have a scrumptious, delicious, sweet from bay fruit. <laughs> Next, 
We're gonna do a dish. I call it tangerine champagne sorbet. Okay, we'll set this aside. We're gonna make the sorbet with mandarin orange juice, lemon or mandarin orange, and also a kind of orange liqueur and champagne, okay? Because we have to make this ahead of time. So I wanna show you the one that I have already made. Look at this, this is cool. When this is done, we'll put it over here. Look at this, this is, a lot of people say, what is the difference between a serpent and a sorbet? The difference is about five bucks a gallon. <laughs> a lot of people love dessert. Look at this, we put one over here. But when they eat dessert, they always feel guilty afterwards. But for me, I must confess, I only feel guilty when I don't eat enough. <laughs> when put it over here, and also chop a tiny, tiny bit of mandarin orange peel. Sprinkle it on top. This is how beautiful it is. Serve with almond cookies. And this is a beautiful sorbet. In addition to that wonderful sorbet, we have a lot of other sweet treats that you can buy in a Chinese candy store. Look at all these things, very colorful variety. Here we have the cure salted plums. Fish candy, because it's shaped like a fish. And then we have these cure plum. This is actually sweet with a tiny bit of five spice flavor. Red pickled ginger hot and sweet. And also this is another cure plum with different flavor. And this is the Chinese called Nan Min. This is red candy ginger. And then we have the Kum Kwat, sweet candy Kum Kwat. Chinese variety of sweet olive. This is sweet plum, sesame seed cookie, little candy. This is of course it's a lotus, sweet candy lotus root. And the coconut candy. Here we also have the black sesame seed candy. Candy ginger and the peanut coconut candy. With all of these, I also make myself a little almond walnut coconut cake. All these sweet treats are making me hungry for sweet walnut soup. Sweet soup is very, very traditional. It has a long history as a Chinese dessert. Like the soup that we know, hot and creamy. But it's different because we serve them after meal to leave a sweet taste for our palate. Here, the first thing I would do is I want to make the walnut. You can toast out the walnut, you can pan fry the walnut, you can bake the walnut, but we are gonna show you how to make this by deep frying the walnut. Turn on the heat first, so everybody can do it. This walnut is slightly parboiled and dry, so we quickly deep fry this walnut. Can you see that? Do it over low heat. Whenever you deep fry nut, always use low heat. Move them around to allow uniform cooking. And this is good elbow exercise. Do it for a couple hours. <laughs> See that? Great exercise. When this is nice and done, use a blender and make some, chop it up and puree it, okay? We put all of these, this walnut right here. Okay. This is already fried. Put a tiny bit of walnut butter, or you can use peanut butter, and use a tiny, tiny bit of water and then you cover this up. Don't put in too much at the same time, otherwise it'll come out. Every time, I don't want anybody to hear what I say. I turn this on so nobody hear what I say. If you want to talk, shut it off. You don't want, turn it on. When it's done, just looking at the thing moving around and getting me dizzy. Look at this. I hope 
We had this little gadget when I was growing up in China. We used to pound it, crush it, and stir it. It takes weeks. Look at this. Why I'm doing this? I'm going to come back here and make my syrup with brown sugar. Melt this. Stir. And then I check my walnut. It looks great. And then I check all of these. And then I come back here. Great exercise. And then I turn it back on. And shut it off because it's done. And then we put them all together. Look at this. This is being done. And we'll take this out. Make sure you put it out. Oh, absolutely scrumptious. We put this right in here. Look at this. This is beautiful. When this is done, we put this over here. And let me show you. We will turn it up a little bit. Medium. Because you're boiling the sugar, melting the sugar. You use brown sugar. Or you can use the rock sugar, OK? Stir this. Stir. That's why it's so important to have a cooking chopstick because you can use this for cooking, for everything, for serving, picking up wonton egg roll. You can deep fry shrimp ball, beef ball, chicken ball, ping pong ball, golf ball. <laughs> Pick this up. The reason why this is a nice long cooking chopstick is because it's so long when you're deep frying something, you don't have to get too close to your oil. If this is too close to your oil when something happens, it splash. It would hurt your finger. That's why this long cooking chopstick, so you can stay two and a half miles away while you're doing this, you see. This is done. Look at this. This is very easy. I want to show you how beautiful the color is when it's done. Look at this. Nice and golden brown. Look at this. Everybody can see that. When it's done, we'll put it over here. Let it sit for a little while. In the meantime, I want to show you another thing. Look at this. We're going to show you how to make this. In the old days in China, we don't have a blender. So you know what we do? We put this over here, and we go like this first, OK? You do it. It takes about three to five weeks to do it. <laughs> you crush this, you crush this. But this is good, because I'm going to show you. We're going to save some of these. And then another piece, beautiful piece, put it on top. We're going to garnish this. Now, when this is done, you put a tiny bit of coconut milk, about half a cup of coconut milk. Anywhere from one third of a cup to half a cup would be fine. And a tiny bit of evaporated milk. OK, this is optional. Make sure to turn this around. And then you thicken it up with cornstarch. OK, look at this. We're going to thicken it up with cornstarch. And then we are going to get a big spoon, not slaughter spoon, one of these spoons to scoop out our soup. Look at this. Stir. This is done. When it's done, all you have to do is put this right over here with this. This is beautiful. I love it. Make sure they're nice and thick. And you shut this off, and you put it over here. Sprinkle some extra walnut. Look at how beautiful. Put a couple pieces to make sure everybody know this is actually walnut soup. <laughs> Aside from this wonderful walnut soup, we also have the sweet black sesame seed soup and this creamy peanut soup. A great dessert is not only icing on the cake. It is the icing, the cake, and everything else in between. So after dinner tonight, don't forget to have a sweet conclusion. Until next time, if Yen can cook, so can you. Join in.